treatise on the education of daughters by francois fenelon chapter one this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org chapter one on the importance of the education of daughters the education of girls is, in general, exceedingly neglected. Custom and maternal caprice often appear to have the entire regulation of it. It absolutely seems as if we suppose the sex to be in need of little or no instruction. On the other hand, the education of boys is considered as a very important concern, affecting the welfare of the public, and although it be frequently attended with errors and mistakes great abilities are nevertheless thought necessary for the accomplishment of it the brightest talents have been engaged to form plans and modes of instruction what numbers of masters in colleges do we behold what expenses incurred in the printing of books in researches after science in modes of teaching languages in the establishment of professors all these grand preparations may probably have more show than substance but they sufficiently denote the high idea we entertain of the education of boys in regard to girls some exclaim why make them learn it curiosity renders them vain and conceited it is sufficient if they be one day able to govern their families and implicitly obey their husbands examples are then adduced of many women whom science has rendered ridiculous and on such contemptible authority we think ourselves justified in blindly abandoning our daughters to the conduct of ignorant and indiscreet mothers it is true that we should be on our guard not to make them ridiculously learned women in general possess a weaker but more inquisitive mind than men hence it follows that their pursuits should be of a quiet and sober turn they are not formed to govern the state to make war or to enter into the church so that they may well dispense with any profound knowledge relating to politics military tactics philosophy and theology the greater part of the mechanical arts are also improper for them they are made for moderate exercise their bodies as well as minds are less strong and energetic than those of men but to compensate for these defects nature has bestowed on them a spirit of industry united with a propriety of behavior and an economy which renders them at once the ornament and comfort of home but admitting that women are by nature weaker than men what is the consequence what but that the weaker they are the more they stand in need of support have they not duties to perform which are the very foundation of human existence consider it is women who ruin or uphold families who regulate the minutiae of domestic affairs and who consequently decide upon some of the dearest and tenderest points which affect the happiness of man they have undoubtedly the strongest influence on the manners good or bad of society a sensible woman who is industrious and religious is the very soul of a large establishment and provides both for its temporal and eternal welfare notwithstanding the authority of men in public affairs it is evident that they cannot effect any lasting good without the intervention and support of women the world is not a phantom it is the aggregate of all its families and who can civilize and govern these with a nicer discrimination than women besides their natural assiduity and authority at home they are particularly calculated for it by a carefulness attention to particulars industry and a soft and persuasive manner can men promise themselves any felicity in this life if marriage the very essence of domestic society be productive of bitterness and disappointment and as to children who are to constitute the future generation 
to what misery will they be exposed if their mothers ruin them from the cradle such then are the occupations of the female sex which cannot be deemed of less importance to society than those of the male it appears that they have a house and establishment to regulate a husband to make happy and children to rear virtue is as necessary for men as for women and without entering upon the comparative good or ill which society experiences from the latter sex it must be remembered that they are one half of the human race redeemed by the blood of jesus christ and destined to eternal life lastly let us not forget that if women do great good to the community when well educated they are capable of infinite mischief when viciously instructed it is certain that a bad education works less ill in a male than in a female breast for the vices of men often proceed from the bad education which their mothers have given them and from passions which have been instilled to them at a riper age from casual intercourse with women what intrigues does history present to us what subversion of laws and manners what bloody wars what innovations in religion what revolutions in states all arising from the irregularities of women ought not these considerations to impress us with the importance of female education let us therefore discuss the various means of accomplishing so desirable an object end of chapter one on the importance of the education of daughters by francois fenelon 1651 to 1715